We've got views, let's use it. We've got panels, let's use it. Using PHP inside Drupal backends. Um, this is a security issue. If um, you don't know where your PHP is, you can't override it easy enough because if it's in database, then there's no way to hook into it easily enough. Or no, when you need to change something, you've got to trail through all the different um, forms and fields that put the PHP in. It should all be in modules. Um, they don't understand how to create content. One I've had recently is they built the site, but they've done every single page as a TPL file, but they put the content directly in there, which is pretty important for CMS. So it's basically a static site, but Drupal. In Drupal, we've got multiple skill sets, which, which is what you should be looking at. We've got developers, they do all the, the module development, they write the modules, they know the Drupal API. If you've got a developer that's saying that they don't know Drupal API, then they're not a Drupal developer. <coughs> Drupal API is the core functionality and the skill set that you need to know. It's api.drupal.org. It's all there for you. But they should know the basic hooks. They should know how the hooks functions work um, and how you can override forms, which is a common requirement for many clients. Um, they need to be able to output their code from the themas, which they need to be able to then overwrite with the theme there. So the theme, they're all just front end guys, you know, HTML, CSS, or JS. In Drupal, it's very different. That's changed in Drupal 8. You've got the theme there is PHP, you need to know a bit of PHP because you've got your functions, your um, pre process functions, uh, your theme underscore, etc. functions. And then you've got your, except your TPL files, which have all got PHP in. The no PHP because you've got the basic condition. Very basic PHP you need to know for a beamer. Site builder configurer. They know how to configure Drupal. They know how the performance in Drupal works. They know how to set up views, panels, build your arguments, contextual filters, context blocks, B, everything on the DO basically. And then we come to the architect. Their job is to architect the site, you know, you give them the functionality that they that you want for the site. They then come back and say, okay, we'll use this module here, this is on Drupal or we're ready to do this, we need to build this as a custom function here. We've got uh, another API we need to hook into, so we need to build more modules for that. So they're basically the kind of leading the pro the whole project all together, but they know Drupal as well. They're possibly ex developer, ex FEMA. How do you know you've got a superstar? FEMA, they should know all the basics. They should know TPLs, they should know template, they should know bits of SAS CSS, they should know the Drupal CSS classes. Um, they should know how basic themes work. They should know PHP to a certain standard or a copy script. Developer, you should know the hooks. You should know basic. Um, queries like db select, db query, etc. You've got the dot infos, your dot modules, and your dot includes. Um, yeah. The architects, they know Drupal modules inside out, they know what the clients want, and they know how to make it reality. Your site builder, they know how to do views and how to do contextual filters. <coughs> They know panels, they know organic groups, they know the space we beam, etc. Where can you find a Drupal superstar? If you're not on Drupal.org, you're not, well, it's a tough question. You shouldn't really be a Drupal superstar because Drupal is all Drupal's about the community, your community you're giving back what you've worked on. So you've got your sprints, you've got the word of the mouth, so you know, this guy did a brilliant job for me in Drupal, it's such and such, Drupal IRC. Loads of us are on there. Um, people ask questions, we give them help. Drupal social events like this, this might well, like be a social event. The Drupal issue queues, if you're, if you're helping on Drupal.org with an issue, then uh, you've got more chance of being a superstar. Any questions? Awesome. Oh, no, yeah. Um, yeah, just 
kind of taking into account my, my experience. What do you consider a hiring person who has some knowledge, of some, who has some front end knowledge, CSS, JS, jQuery, but he doesn't know anything about TPLs, whatever, mm. or top templates, yeah. or things like that? So. Yeah. So they, so they know like they've been given a basic HTML. So basically, they, they, they are a, they are the good front end developers. They know HTML, CSS. They understand jQuery. They can do lots of nice yeah. things with the jQuery. What do you consider that person? And just I don't know, famous or what's your? I consider on? them as a front end guy and not a Drupal Femer because in Drupal Femer you've got all these functions as well, but you've also got the Drupal JS behaviors. Um, if they don't know that, then because you you know you've got your different forms. So if you've got a login form here, um, a blog using a view, you know you need to know the structure of that and then where the TPLs are stored. Um, with the login, if they want you know different text instead of email, it says ID or something like that. Then you know how the hook form also works inside the template.php. So this is kind of what you get with Drupal Fevers. Mm. No, but whether you consider for the um, taking on that person on a role, if if they take yeah. him up, just say yeah, it. if they're happy to learn Drupal, I know many front end guys that don't want to touch Drupal for barge pole because they're just basic front end guys. But if they're happy to learn Drupal, then yeah, by all means, take them on. Okay. But show them Drupal.org and then how to do the code and standards. But all the all the TPL files and everything else, you can find out through Theme Developer, can't you? Yeah. So you don't really need to know. We need, but you need to know. Exactly now, because even tell you the <coughs> location of where they are, what the overlaps are. But the thing is, with true <coughs> normal, so if I get to an normal front end guy, he wouldn't even know where to start to develop. No, develop no, you can get a lot of help, can't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah. With develop fever, it's a glorious thing to help you with. Um, but then they need to know how to override. I mean, basically, Drupal theming book has it all in, saying, you know, this is your TPL file. This is what you need to override. This is the naming conventions of that theme. So yeah, develop theme is brilliant. Um, everyone uses it, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I've got a question. It was about um, uh, PHP filter and including PHP. Don't use it. No, 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 no I've just got a quick question. If you've limited it to administrators and you've limited it to a particular... So what happens if that administrator gets hit by a bus? Yeah, you're another administrator, you? yeah, but they were, but how the other guys going to know where it is? This is why. What if you limit it to a particular content type? It still should be. There's loads of things saying that it should be Drupal core. So you can, you know, SQL injections and get through. Um, you can do like queries from string as well. You can break it. Right. Um, XSS as well. So they, you know, they might not. They might copy and paste something which has got some dodgy bits and pieces in, which can. Corrupt the database per se. Yeah, but I mean, all the paranoia about it is really about security, isn't it? Yeah, it's all this. That's why we've got a security team. Yeah. Any maintenance? Sorry? Any maintenance? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which one? It's very difficult to Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, but that's why you can stick it in a particular content type. And you can yeah. Which one you've got. But then it's not much. Yeah, you know, yes, it's a quick win, but at the end of the day, you need your stuff. You know, if you're giving it to some, say, for instance, the client doesn't want to stay with you, they want to go somewhere else. By putting it in these TP, in these content types or the fields and views, etc., these guys, I've had it many times, I've gone into, I've seen it, I've been looking for something, I'm like, where is it, where is it? Oh, I must be in the view. But I've had to waste a lot of time doing that, whereas if it's in a module or a theme TPL file, I went, oh, bam, there it is, under, in a switch statement or something. So that's, and that's kind of why it should really be in core as well as the security issues because it's you know it's to make our lives easy basically yeah we we you know we're striving with you know, tons of issues that do come from Drupal modules and we're trying to fix bugs of clients saying oh this isn't working or we need this to work we want your functionality and if they then say I've got a deadline that needs to be done right today and we don't know where it is and if it's been passed off to another agency, for instance, they're not going to know where it is. Yeah, I mean, I'm not necessarily talking about full blown PHP, I'm more really talking about. You well, just like wanna, a, you just a, want to hide. T, a T function or something. Yeah, you want to hide a bit, a, bit of, a, a bit of text appearing on the top if you've got a pager or something like that, and you're on page two. 
Those kind of things. Okay. okay. You can do it with CSS, really. Yeah, I know you can, yeah. <laughs> yeah, then it's in the code, isn't it? Yeah, well, you can use the CSS injection <coughs> model. Um, so basically, you can type your CSS out, yeah. and then what it does is it, um, based upon the part of the page that you set it to go to, it will inject that as a CSS, .css file, and it will go into the actual site. And when, it, when you run performance, it will go into site's default files, CSS. So that's another option. But then, you know, it's, it's knowing, oh, actually, there's a thing here, I need to go here, and yeah. it's, you know,
PM. Oh, okay. yeah, 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 some it's also a relevant one to the servers. You only want to the servers the default repository if you install from there, it works perfectly. Ubuntu, yeah? Yeah, the Ubuntu servers. If you type uh, an app, yeah. app, 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 app cache search, then it installs that one and it should work. Yeah, I've got enough on it, it's like nothing that's cool. Uh, I didn't like Ubuntu's uh, um, UI now, I didn't like that desktop on there. I'm confused with the side of the with Mint, so I don't know if it works on Mint. But... Mm. Right, okay. Awesome. Well done then. <laughs> <laughs>